This recording looks at some of the overseas issues to do with VAT. I have done a recording on this previously, but that was when the UK was part of the European Union, and things have rather changed since we left the EU, so I thought a little update was probably required. Firstly, goods. If goods are moving between the UK and another country, if they're moving from the UK to another country, they are an export. And now there are special rules for goods going via Northern Ireland, which I do not intend to cover on this recording. In simple terms, Northern Ireland is sort of still effectively part of the EU from a VAT point of view, but we're not going to get into that now. So as long as you have goods and they leave the United Kingdom, then the sale can be zero rated. All you need is proof that the goods have actually left the UK. It's a little bit more complicated when you're bringing goods into the UK from abroad. That is an import. Now, initially, it's not within the scope of UK VAT because the place of supply is where goods start their journey. And if goods start their journey outside the UK, they're not within the scope of UK VAT. However, as soon as the goods actually come into the UK, the importer has to pay VAT. Now, back in the old days, this VAT had to be paid at customs. The goods basically came from abroad, got stopped at customs, and until you'd handed over the VAT, the goods weren't allowed in. And the VAT is 20% of the value of the goods coming in. Now, following Brexit, they decided to try and sort of simplify this to, to ease international trade. So they extended what they call postponed VAT accounting. Now, that, this applies where the importer is a VAT registered business. They've got a supply their UK VAT number and an economic operator registration number. And as long as everything is in place, then the goods will be allowed into the UK and the VAT that would have been paid to allow the goods into the country just gets charged as output VAT on the importer's next VAT return. Then slightly bizarrely, whether the VAT is actually paid at the border or whether it's paid on the next VAT return, as long as it leads to a taxable supply in the UK, that VAT can then be recovered as import VAT on the next VAT return of the importer. So if you're doing postponed VAT accounting, most of the time, the output VAT and the import VAT will just balance out on the next VAT return. So in diagrammatic form, we've got some goods coming from Australia. They hit the border, they hit the UK. Either the importer pays VAT for the goods to be allowed in, or they give details to allow the postponed VAT accounting. But either of those, customs then release the goods, the goods are allowed into the UK, and the VAT that's either been paid at the border or paid as output VAT on the next VAT return is then recovered as import VAT on the next VAT return. Services are different. You can't have an export or an import of services that the concept of an export or an import only applies to goods. With services, all that you need to look out for is where is the place of supply. If the place of supply is in the UK, then UK VAT has to be charged. If the place of supply is overseas, then it's not within the scope of UK VAT. Now, there is a general rule to determine the place of supply of a service, and it depends on who the customer is. If the customer is another business, what we call a B2B, a business to business supply, then the place of supply is where the customer is established. On the other hand, if the person receiving the service is not a business, they are a consumer, we have a B2C supply, and then the place of supply is where the supplier belongs. However, this being tax, as soon as you have a rule, there are a number of exceptions that apply to specific types of service. Um, the idea of this recording is it's just an introduction to overseas aspects of VAT. Um, so I'm not going to go into the exceptions, but you should be aware that they exist. 
if the probably the the most sort of dangerous one to watch out for is if you're a UK VAT registered business and you receive a service from a business abroad. Well, under this rule, um, if you're a business, you're the recipient of the service, it's B2B, the place of supply is where the customer is established, you're the customer, you're in the UK. So if you receive legal services from a German firm of lawyers, and you're based in the UK, then the place of supply is in the UK, you will then have to charge yourself VAT um, or 20% on the value of the service. And that is what they call a reverse charge. And what happens is you will have to account for this VAT as output VAT, but then as long as you are a fully taxable supplier, you will then just recover it as input VAT on the same VAT return. And as I said a second ago, they refer to that as a reverse charge.